Hi, folks. Welcome to an episode, another episode of the Skeptical Leftist Podcast. Um, it's going. I'm going through a little bit of a rebrand now. I'm, I'm turning it into just the Skeptical Leftist Podcast instead of the Mind of a Skeptical Leftist. And uh, yeah, so there's a new logo. You might have noticed. I'm starting to slowly transition the website over. And uh, of course, Red Reviews is still Red Reviews, but the whole broader project is now going to be the Skeptical Leftist Podcast. And uh, anyway, this is another one of my uh, wonderful interviews. This time I talked to Sally from the Anrel uh, po- uh, YouTube channel. Um, she talks about uh, various subjects like uh, sur- various subjects surrounding anarchism um, and relationships and, and like having a non- non-hierarchical uh, relationships. And uh, she's done some great videos on like what is hierarchy, some really, really cool videos i'll obviously i'll post the links in the show notes um i do think like doing the editing on this um it made me think that this was actually uh not that bad of it it was a pretty good interview i thought uh at the time i remember feeling like flustered and a little bit out of sorts like i hadn't done a very good job as an interviewer but i think that um i think that the end product is actually turning out pretty well i'm glad that we didn't do it live uh so it wasn't on uh twitch or anything so nobody's seen this until the edited version comes out and then that will be available on on youtube and i'm gonna probably stream it on twitch quickly too but uh so then it'll be up there for a few day a few weeks <clears throat> but yeah uh sally is a very uh smart person very interesting person and i hope that uh you really enjoy this interview and i hope that you go check out uh her channel so on to the pitch <laughs> um you might have noticed a slight decline in production because uh, my family and I are moving and it's tax season, so I've got that on my plate. And uh, I seem to have this thing now where uh, if I have too many things on the go, my mind locks up and I, I can't really produce anything. So I had to really like ignore all the important stuff so that I could focus on getting the, the podcast out. Um, <laughs> so, so hopefully this is all coming out in relatively good timing and... Uh, yeah, I hope you, this finds you all well. And anyway, I'm I'm working on getting the content out as fast as I can. I'm trying every little trick in the book with my brain uh, being so weird lately. And uh, and we're moving, <laughs> which I might I mentioned last time, but uh, we are we are moving uh, at the end of April. So the more support uh, we can get through Patreon or through Buy Me a Coffee uh, is would be great. Um, yeah, just can use the help. Rent went up quite a bit, like, uh, probably what, like 25% more. (laughs) So, uh, or no, it's even almost 50% more. Uh, but anyway, so patreon.com slash skeptical leftist. And obviously I have to thank all my patrons uh, and supporters. That includes Jason, who, uh, recently, uh, sent me money on, uh, buy me a coffee, which is buymeacoffee.com slash skeptical lefty. Links are always in the show notes. All of my supporters make it possible for me to do this show. Uh, support levels on Patreon start at a dollar per month or a dollar fifty for Canadians. Uh, you can now subscribe on uh, Spotify for ninety nine cents a month. So then that money will come my way, and that gives you also uh, access to uh, bonus content. I'm going to start uploading the bonus content as video there, so that maybe will incentivize some people there. Um, that means for some red reviews episodes, you get like three hours of a video of me and Justin shooting the shit. Uh, sometimes like, like this most recent red reviews has like 20 minutes in the start and like an hour and a half of content after the, after the show. So, uh, yeah, so that's all going to be on Spotify. If you want it on YouTube or on uh, Patreon, let me know. I'll, I'll make sure that it gets on Patreon as well. Um, If you can't support me with money, then please hit the like button. Uh, Make sure to subscribe on the YouTube channel or the podcast app of your choice. Uh, Go write a review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or Podchaser. Uh, I always need more ratings and reviews. It looks like we're getting a a few five-star ratings, so I I really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, definitely hit the the bell on the... (laughs) Ding! (laughs) The bell on the on the uh, YouTube so that you get every episode of the show for sure. You can always contact me on social media or on 
YouTube or by leaving a comment on YouTube. Or you can contact me on my website, which is skepticalleftist.com. And you can email me at mindofaskepticalleftist at gmail.com. I think that's everything. On to the interview. All right. Hi, and welcome to The Mind of a Skeptical Leftist. I am Corey Johnson, and uh, today I'm joined by Sally, uh, host of the channel Anne Rel. Is that right? Yes. That is right. <laughs> Killed it. Nailed it. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> so I guess a good place to start is uh, to get you to tell us a little bit about yourself, anything you're comfortable sharing, like uh, perhaps background, political ideology, and so on, <laughs> that stuff. Sure. Uh, I am anarchist. I make YouTube videos on the Anrel channel about uh, about anarchism and about relationships. I'm trying to bring the two worlds together with varying degrees of success. Um, but that is that is the intention. That is the sort of niche that I'm trying to carve out for myself. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Did that? That's perfect. Did I cover it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's perfect. Um, I, I'm. Uh, what got you into uh, like anarchism? Mm, well, I'd been a leftist for like a long time, um, but I'd sort of I'd end up in that place where the leftism that was available to me was not doing it to, for me, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Like it was it was very heavily focused on electoral politics. And I previous to this channel, actually, I had a different YouTube channel on Canadian politics where I was making um, videos. And it was one of those situations where like I'd be doing all of these deep dives and research into these various systemic problems and then presenting them and hopefully trying to present some sort of solution. And at the end of every, every video, I would just come up short. I'd be like, I don't know how to fix this, actually. <laughs> right. You can go out and vote. Like, you can go out and, and, you know, get involved with your local representatives or whatever. But that doesn't seem to be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, uh, yeah, after doing that for a couple of years, I just got really frustrated and went looking for better options. And uh, the pandemic was happening. So that was a really great catalyst for radicalization you could say yep. um pretty yep. pretty miserable time so for better or for worse i definitely had the time and the space to go so down some um theory rabbit holes nice. i guess you could say and meet some new people yeah um so you yeah, I don't you know. uh you must read a lot then yes i can read a lot <laughs> <laughs> i listen a lot mostly it's it's all okay. audiobooks at this yeah. point yeah but yeah, it's a never-ending reading list. Yeah, never I, ending I, things to catch I find up my <laughs> pile of books that I download and buy, they're piling up and I'm like, oh, I, I can maybe read a book every two months. Like I'm a super slow reader. <laughs> I think that's a very reasonable pace, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. It seems like yeah. It seems like a lot of like people that I listen to or follow, they often are reading like a book a week or a book a day. And I'm like, holy cow, like, I can't do that. Yeah, it's intense. It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> Yeah. And there's, there's, you never catch up. Like there's always more, there's an infinite amount of books and podcasts and interviews that you could listen to. And, 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 and. So yeah, that's right. I just, used to, uh, <laughs> I used to be a com like kind of a completionist with podcasts. <laughs> oh yeah. Like you would walk, like listen to all of the episodes front, front to back. Yeah. Or I would, I would let them pile up in my playlist. So then I, I eventually see. had like 350 podcasts that I was behind and I'm trying to catch up and then new ones come out and I go, okay, I got to listen to that one today. <laughs> mm, mm. <laughs> but now I'm like 400 episodes behind. So yeah, eventually. Yeah, I that just, happened to me too. Yeah. My YouTube watch later list is always looking like that as well. Like yeah. there's just so many days on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think my watch later list is about 300 videos long. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get to them eventually. Well, we're definitely going to finish that list at some point. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I don't even remember what the very first one was, but I'm sure that yeah. I'll get to it. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, I guess on the subject of, uh, your channel, like you do video mm -hmm. essays, I do. which I, I, uh, I have to say I admire, I, I've been trying to work on one myself. It's very difficult work. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's harder than it looks, right? <laughs> it's very hard to write that much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, uh what's the, what are you writing about? I, I want to kind of break down anarchism in a little bit different way than, people usually do. Uh, mm -hmm. The way I see it, there's uh, kind of four parts to it. Uh, one okay. is like uh, a theory about the future or like how we're going to build the world. Uh, one is kind of an analysis of the present and the, the world around us uh, and the past. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we have like anarcho relationships. Uh, and then I have the day-to-day -day life of like, or no, then mm -hmm. it was praxis was the other one. So how we build. Right, right. Yeah. So those were kind of the four parts I wanted to focus on. And I'm, I'm still 
breaking it down. <laughs> you you you've picked a very broad subject to fit into the video essay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, you really cut like got your work cut out for you. But I, I have faith it'll be, it'll be good. <laughs> it might end up. I might have to do more than just one video <laughs> on it. But that's yeah, that's what ended up happening to me, and that's what continues to happen to me. Is every time I sit down to write one, it turns into five, and then I'll try yeah. to do part two, and that turns into five, and. <laughs> There's just a billion ongoing scripts at any given moment, um, for better fair. or for worse. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah. So I guess uh, you said you were doing a, a Canadian politics podcast beforehand. Mm. So what what was the bridge from uh, that confusion into uh, anarcho relations? Um. Yeah, I guess I took kind of a weird weirder path to anarchism than most in that like i found anarchist theory through relationship anarchy actually okay. like that was my like gateway point because i was aware of anarchism i've been on the left for a long time but i didn't understand anarchism right <laughs> uh yeah it was it yeah my, my understanding of anarchism was um wrong <laughs> <laughs> shallow, shallow at best uh yeah so i'm not quite sure how to describe it but uh at the time i was just like it, trying out a bunch of different, uh, I guess, alternative relationship styles, structures, ideologies. I knew that I wasn't happy with like the norms that had been handed to me. Mm -hmm. um, so I was trying out various, you know, non-monogamy, polyamory, solo polyamory, and eventually found my way into relationship anarchy. And then in those spaces came across a lot of, uh, I'm not going to say problems, but <laughs> but disalignments okay. uh, with my values, I would say. Fair. And that was confusing to me because it seemed like theoretically, everything that I wanted, but in practice, not so much. Okay. Um, and I found that there was like a pretty substantial divide actually between practicing relationship anarchists and anarchist theory. Like for some reason over amount, enough time, it got watered down to the point where it's just not anarchic anymore. Mm -hmm. Like the mm -hmm. anarchist core was missing. Um, yeah. And so I was like, that looks like a project for me. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that. <laughs> I'm going to reconcile this problem. <laughs> <laughs> this is not good enough and uh, i think i can fix it or i think i can you know contribute to making it a little bit less um broken <laughs> that's good uh yeah what would you so i guess for people who might not know what is relationship anarchy it is applying anarchist theory to your relationships um <laughs> <laughs> non-hierarchical relationships no power exactly yeah yeah, yeah. uh i think a lot of people do tend to sort of confuse it with polyamory because um because of the like a metanormative culture that we live in, we do tend to focus on romantic sexual relationships as being like the most important or the most valuable or, you know, the one that everyone's like obsessed with is, okay. is these sorts of relationships. But relationship anarchy does um, like put a lot of intentionality in breaking down even that hierarchy and looking at all of your relationships as being part of an internet interconnected network um, that, you know, continually, it's like a feedback loop. Like if your relationships suffer, then, then that's, going to affect all of your relationships including your your romantic sexual ones um yeah 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 that makes sense i i one of the things that uh i might it might have come from one of your videos actually where i was mm -hmm. i'm i'm like uh, i try to practice anarchist values in my relationship with my partner but i sure. i wasn't really valuing my friendships uh, mm -hmm. in the same way that I, you know, like I still prioritize my romantic partner versus my friendships. And I was like, well, I wonder if I should like, like, maybe this makes sense. Maybe I need to be more intentionally active in my friendships and spend more time working on those. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously I would argue yes, but it's also <laughs> much easier said than done in, yeah. in today's society with all the values that are being, um, you know, imposed on us. So it's, I understand why that's not the norm. Yeah. Today. Yeah. But it is, it is the goal, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely not easy, especially like, because everybody's got to work and you got like, I don't think I had much time for friends before I had a romantic relationship. <laughs> so, right, right. So it was, it's not like that changed that much, but. No. But I always, I always, uh, I guess I make time for this. So I could, I can find a way to make time for <laughs> friends. <laughs> like I, I do podcasting way more than I maybe should, but <laughs> well, I don't know if, if you've got a thing that you're passionate about and you get to be creative. Like, I don't think that that's necessarily a detriment to your relationships. Fair. No, that's, or maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the thing too. Like uh, what a person can be uh, anarchic and, and egalitarian in their relationships, but then 
not everybody that you know is an anarchist, right? So they're all being <laughs> them and you're right. trying to do what right. you can do. And yeah, try and just accept the way things are, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes. And I like to think that like the people around me who are not anarchists are also, like I like to think that we are influencing each other in some ways and mm -hmm. that, you know, in some ways, I'm sure everyone around me is becoming slowly radicalized in some way or another just just by virtue of being around me um, and i'm sure <laughs> that i'm you know, also absorbing their values uh yeah so i think yeah you know i think it's worth it to be to be careful about the people that you surround yourself with because that's that's just going to happen yeah that's that's <laughs> all true. of the time yeah yeah you you don't want to be i guess around a bunch of like really toxic people because that's could seep into your your life and your attitudes yeah and it's just exhausting i've, I've had enough thank you yeah fair <laughs> Yeah, uh, the whole yeah, so uh, the relationship anarchy thing is. Uh, I find it, it's in my per in my my romantic relationship, it it works quite well because we're both mm. kind of on the same wavelength. But I have uh, mm. I have trouble actually with our children. <laughs> mm. I, as a parent, I still have a lot of that uh, dominance kind of mindset that like I need to tell you how to behave kind of mindset that I'm trying to work on. Right. Right. Do you have um, how, how many kids do you have? Uh, I personally have uh, I have two biological ch kids and two stepkids. And okay, okay. So my biological kids are uh, a little older, nineteen and sixteen, and then uh, my mm -hmm. stepkids are seven and four. So it's so you have quite a lot of young people in your life. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that you're in a relationship with. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, the youth are wonderful. They're fascinating. Yeah. They're, we, I feel like we can learn so much from from. Yeah, from our kids. I don't have children. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, uh, from the kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from the kids. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my older kids, uh, I wasn't as much of an anarchist when they were little or when they mm -hmm. were younger as I am now. So I find that when I interact with them, I I often feel like I didn't did a disservice to them. I wasn't as good a parent as I could have been, <laughs> but because because the anarchist values weren't there. Like I, I didn't, I mean, I taught them as I, as I learned them, but um, mm -hmm. for the little ones, like I'm trying very hard to be like, you know, your consent really matters before I even, you know, tickle you or anything. Like it's very important that you, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you're, I mean, that's how generational trauma works. Like you only have access to what you have access to. True. And if you didn't have access to anarchism 20 years ago, then you <laughs> didn't have access to it. Like that's. Yeah. Yeah. But. We're learning as we go. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> I like to think, yeah. I, I guess to make this interview more about you again. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't need to be. This can just be a conversation. Yeah. Do you get to talk about yourself much on your channel or about like what you, uh, no, what your creative uh, endeavors are? <laughs> I usually am asking questions about other people's mm -hmm. views and attitudes and, and whatnot. So. Okay. I, I've gone and done a couple interviews on other people's shows, but I don't usually like... Mm. I. I'm not a good interview subject. <laughs> what, what makes you say that? Because uh, I, I don't, I don't, uh, unless something, unless somebody's talking about uh, a subject that I actually know a bit about, I'll just say, I don't know. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Which I think it's good to know when you don't know. That's, seems, that's seems valuable. honest to me, but doesn't like yeah. progress the conversation sometimes. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> progress the conversation like we're headed somewhere specific <laughs> right yeah yeah that's true no but i, I, I hear what you say yeah. <laughs> so uh your channel has grown pretty decent in the in the amount of time that it's been on uh i guess so yes yeah. i think uh like most of that is thanks to drew uh, there was also um i got a little bit of a bump from chill goblin and foreign foreign land foreign man in a foreign land oh yeah bit yeah. of a mouthful um, but yeah, they've been really, really wonderful. Uh, so it, it is still a small baby channel, but it's growing and yeah. that makes me excited. And I've, yeah. How, and this channel has existed for how long? Uh, two and a half years. Okay. Okay. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And this is, this is the, like, you just bring people on here to chat kind of a, a thing. And then you have also separate, um, a different podcast or several. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, me and my buddy, Justin, we do, uh, like book reviews as well on this channel. Mm -mm, I've seen those. Yeah. So, and I mean, he reads the books and does the review and I'm just the guy who talks to him. Right, <laughs> but, right. but, uh, sometimes I've read the books, but not all, usually not. <laughs> right. But it's good to have two people to have like that conversational tone. And then you get to ask all the questions that the, like the, the viewer or listener would probably be 
thinking to ask. Yeah. So I can see the format. It's a good format. Yeah. Um, and sorry, I redirected it back to you. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> kind of instinctual for me. Um, yeah. What was the question you asked? <laughs> um, I think I just commented on the growth of your channel is all I, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yes. it, it's, it's, uh, yeah. So, uh, I guess you have some upcoming videos. Well, what are some sneak peeks into that? Uh, working title of the ones I think is most, that's going to come out soonest is, uh, the art of semantics. Um, and that I think is going to be part of a series on like conflicts and communication and community building, um, with, with anarchic values. Um, and also because I'm just, I'm so, I'm, I don't want to hear the phrase, it's just semantics ever again in my life. And I will, <laughs> I know I'm going to hear it, but I, I need something to like point people to, to be like, this is not, this is not it. <laughs> right. Cut it out. <laughs> semantics is everything. Um, yeah. So that's the project I've been working on. It's, it's gotten larger than I intended it to be. It'll be out eventually. <laughs> yeah. No, that's fair. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, I guess in a way that's kind of the 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 thing right like if you're trying to be accurate and you're trying to have the best information possible it takes time it takes work like it's it's gonna be a yes. project right yeah and it's i don't know for i don't know what it's like for other creators but for me like the hardest thing is always it's this massive massive web of ideas right and now i have to try to find out like figure out how to cut it out <laughs> and take yeah. like the, the littlest possible piece and and still have that be comprehensive and not go down all of the other side roads and tangents that are part of the thing, but you know, I don't really have the resources to be making hours and hours long videos at this point. So yeah, got to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's fair. Like the, yeah, I don't, the time resource is the one that I always seem to be lacking. Like, uh, yeah. that's, it's, uh, do you mind? I, I, I hope it doesn't cross the line, but do you mind me asking if you're neurotypical? <laughs> I'm not. I'm okay. neurodivergent. <laughs> okay. Um, because <laughs> I, you were kind of describing the web of ideas and trying to connect them, and I absolutely cannot do it. Like, <laughs> and, uh, I've, I'm, I'm undiagnosed. I'm not diagnosed with anything, but for a while, <laughs> I've been suspicious that I might have attention attention issues. Uh, right. But, but so yes. for you, you have a hard time connecting them, or a hard time focusing. A them, hard time focusing both. on one thing long enough mm, to draw mm-hmm. like a line between different ideas. Yes. Yes. I understand the struggle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've had a, a working theory for a long time that neuro neurodivergency, I guess we can call it is um, like overrepresented in the video essay sphere. Like I think it, it kind of <laughs> has to be by virtue of the creators and, and the work that's being I put suppose, out. I suppose. Yeah. It's the kind of thing that uh, draws that kind of uh, a different mentality, right? Or- yeah. Yeah. But I can't prove that. So it's just a, a hunch <laughs> you could call it. Somebody needs to do the research. Somebody that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Yeah. So I guess, uh, what are you reading now? Um, there's a couple of books that I'm ongoing reading right now. I guess I, I don't really, I'm bad at finishing the books I start in one go, especially when it comes to nonfiction and theory. Mm-hmm. Um, but Seeing Like a State by James C. Scott is one that is phenomenal. I'm working my way through it. It's dense, but it's excellent. Okay. And then the other one that I'm reading right now was recommended to me recently, uh, Freedom Farmers by Monica M. Wright. Sorry, White. Monica M. White. Okay. Um, and I'm only a couple hours into that one, but it's it's a short read. So far, it's phenomenal. I think it's it's about um, like urban farming. Okay. Uh, specifically in the in the belt, like it's about urban farming. Um, <laughs> I don't want to get yeah. I feel like I'm going to talk about it wrong because I haven't finished the book yet. Ah. Um, yep. Fair. But yes. Yes. Um, are you reading anything right now? I am currently trying to get through uh, Practical Anarchism by Scott uh, J. Branson. Oh, okay. Okay. It's going to be like same Scott? No, different, different Scott. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, uh, it's a pretty new book. Uh, they sent it to me uh, wh- before I interviewed them. Uh, mm. And I, I said I would try very hard to read it. And I'm still only on chapter four. <laughs> That's months ago, but. Uh, is it is it quite dense? No, like just no. It's an e- it's a very easy read. Mm. Uh, it's but I read for about two minutes every day when I eat my breakfast, and mm. and I uh, I yeah I just can't seem to make myself look at a book for much longer than that. Me neither. No physical so. books are canceled. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. 
And it's a bummer because there's so many excellent books that don't have an audio version, but they're just, they're not accessible to me. At this yeah. point. Andrew has so, yeah, turned me on you. to a, a great trick with uh, Microsoft Edge where yeah, it'll like, the, yeah, the reading. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was like, wow, that's really cool. So the other yeah. day I was listening to uh, uh, Feminism is for Everybody by Bell, Bell Hooks. Yes. Because the discourse online was making me very sad. <laughs> which which discourse? The, we need a man, manosphere for the left kind of <laughs> discourse. Oh, yes, this discourse. I'm familiar with this discourse. <laughs> I, I, I like that your instinctual reaction was like, let me just go pull out some bell hooks real quick. Yeah. Get this sorted out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's read somebody who knows what the hell they're talking about. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. There's never there's never an end to the leftist discourse on on twitter.com yeah uh yeah I, w- I was quite busy at work this last week so i missed the latest round okay. <laughs> so i'm not good for you <laughs> i'm not fully up to date on the new anarchist discourse but uh mm. it did seem like the little bit i saw seemed like a train wreck yes yes yeah. that's, that's accurate yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh, i guess in the interest of train wrecks uh what is your hot take on uh, some of the topics of uh discourse like uh the left manosphere topic Ooh, um i don't know that my take on this one is all that hot given <laughs> i feel like we've done we've done this take a few times already um i don't know i don't think the left needs a manosphere i think part of the problem with the manosphere is that because people are, are so lonely they end up trying to fill those sort of community gaps with these um parasocial relationships uh, by seeking out these sort of male guru- gurus to act as as mentor figures and then also like finding community with other people who have similar problems to themselves. Like mm-hmm. I think that that's what the Manosphere uh, does in terms of like drawing people in. Um, and I don't think that that can work on the left because like at the end of the day, like videos are just videos. Like they're just, they're propaganda, they're education. They're not community. Like that's not what they yeah. are. <laughs> um, and you can like, you know, you can form a really, there are a lot of benefits to parasocial relationships. They're not an entirely evil thing. I'm not going to say that, um, but they're not the same thing as being in community with an actual person right. or, you know, network of people. Um, and it's a, I think it's a big problem to solve because, or a difficult one to solve because um, a lot of the, the, the men that do end up going down those rabbit holes or, or pipelines or whatever you want to call them are very difficult to be in community with if you are, marginalized in any way shape or form Mm -hmm. Um, and so i think a lot of that work does need to be done by people who are in their circles and are like how to say uh viewed as like respectable real human beings by them if that makes sense like who who can speak and be heard um yeah that's and that's a yeah yeah that's fair like (laughs) uh, yeah like that was one of the the, my first take the thoughts on it was like okay i get that young white men need a a person or somebody to follow or what have you they need room for growth right Mm -hmm. but that literal like we can't give that to them at the expense of marginalized people people that they could harm by not doing the right things and not you know (laughs) so it seems like i mean yeah we all need room for growth but not if you're going to hurt people right well, sure. Yeah. And I mean, it's not just, I mean, it is harm. Of course it's harm, but it's also like you put, you put uh, a bunch of people with, you know, systemic structural power in a room with a bunch of people that don't. And like certain voices are just inevitably going to be drowned out based on like the norms that exist. Yeah. And so even if you try to do that, even if you were like, you know what, marginalized people don't matter. They, they can be used as like fodder. It still wouldn't work. Is right. the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like it would just, it would still be completely ineffective to do it that way. Um, which is what makes it such a complex problem is that like a lot of the times the voices that have the most insight are the ones that are least accessible to the people that could benefit from from that insight um do, does the left need a pipeline of its own maybe but it can't be a manosphere <laughs> <laughs> right. it, it can't work like the manosphere works. yeah it can't work that way no yeah i think i mean really part of the trouble is like the manosphere works because of the already dominant attitudes of society right yes so you can't do the same thing when you're trying to undermine those norms already <laughs> right it's functionally the exact opposite like you can't go yeah. against the grain in this in the same direction as the grain like that's not <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitionally different yeah. um yeah no that's exactly right but 
I also don't want to like, you know, undercut that there are uh, a bunch of really great um, leftists doing, doing that sort of work. Um, and especially like, you know, men on the leftist, um, like I know FD Signum Hire does a lot of that stuff. Noah Sampson does a lot of yeah. that stuff. They're still not going to be in community with these folks. Like that's not what that is. But right. the fact that the videos exist, I think, um, is still is still valuable and and accessible. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I I quite I quite appreciate FD Signifier's videos for a lot of that stuff. Like, I uh, again, like uh, a lot of his stuff is directed, uh, say, at the Black Manosphere. So I try I try to just absorb the information and be like, wow, this is a positive dude trying to do a positive thing, and like. It's very informative yeah. and good, but I guess yeah. maybe yeah, just to I shift so. gears a touch. Uh, what about the KLYR <laughs> discourse? Ooh. Uh, you do not want to touch that one with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> okay. No, no, you don't. Uh, no worries there. <laughs> yeah. I just was curious because it's, it's another one that I find like people are like, I don't know, often just like jumping on one side or the other and being like, yeah, this is. This is where I stand. So, it's a very emotionally charged topic by design. Yeah, uh, people have a lot of very, very strong emotions about it. Very rightly so. Yeah, and then you put those emotions in a room together, and people can't hear each other, and it gets very, very loud, very, very quickly. I don't think that I've never seen that discourse come to a resolution in any way, shape, or form. Right? Like people have their opinions. Yeah, no one's going to shift. Um, that I've seen. Maybe they will. Maybe I shouldn't. I shouldn't <laughs> prescribe in the future, but. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really hard to get like, it's really hard on any subject, right? To get people mm -hmm. to uh, to overcome their emotions when you inherently create an adversarial back and forth right off the hop. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah, yeah, and I mean, I think there is a lot of there's this focus of so, sort of overcoming emotions, um, not to like pick on a specific thing that you said because this is. Super prevalent, but I think that that part of the reason that we're having so much trouble is that people don't know how to be with their emotions. People mm. don't know how to navigate conflicts. People don't know how to be triggered in the same room and then be okay yeah. and like move through that together. Um, and I, I mean, the left and the right, everyone lacks relational skills. Yeah, and uh, it's a it's a huge <laughs> problem, and it's not coincidental. <laughs> right, is what I'll say on that. Yeah, yeah. I was actually just talking to uh, a new a new guy at work the other day. Uh, we were talking mm -hmm. about uh, like understanding our emotions, like, because mm -hmm. I, I can't remember how it came up, but I was mentioning like in Saskatchewan, there is a, a significant number of uh, farmers who, when they face financial hardships, uh, commit suicide. Mm -hmm. And I said like this, I think is because we haven't taught ourselves, like we haven't taught each other to understand them are the way we're feeling to accept that we're in this emotional place and try to work from that. And, uh, and it seems like when you talk about that stuff, uh, even with other men who might have other toxic attitudes, you can actually bring up like depression and like, you can <laughs> bring up like, yes, it's okay to like fail financially. That doesn't make you a failure as a human and like understand the emotions that you're feeling. It's uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and you're right. And I mean, I think, I mean, that's exactly it. And it's, it's, I think we have this, I, don't, I can't speak to the farmers in Saskatchewan specifically, but there is so much prefer, like pressure to be everything all at once. Mm -hmm. It's a very like individualist mindset. And a lot of the times, like the, the advice that people end up receiving as far, insofar as like dealing with their emotions is very like individual based. Like we, we kind of take the community aspect out of the equation. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I've got obviously like I, I have a bias here, but I don't think that the way that we've like set up our relationships and our communities is great. I think that, you know, if if we have all of these um, farmers that are fa like facing financial hardship like that, that is a community problem. That's not a them problem yeah. to be solved. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then and then but then how, like, yeah, the, and then you come back to that thing of like, oh, well, people aren't asking for help. And it's like, well, how how could they possibly <laughs> know how to like do that effectively? Um, yeah. Well, and that, you that? yeah, I mean. That's the trouble is like, we also, yeah, we, we tend to just treat people who don't meet a certain type of success as like, once the, if they're not at that level, then they're a failure. And then we'd, we just write them off. And I, I don't right. mean you and I, I mean like society, right? Yes. <laughs> but, uh, but so then how can they ask for help when society, when we've already written them off? Like we just said, well, you're, you're a failure too bad. 
And then they're right. supposed to come and ask us, like, who are they even supposed to go and ask for help, right? Right. You don't fit the mold, so you're not worthy yeah. of, of private care and attention. So it's, it's yeah. Yeah. I, I, and that's everybody. Yeah, <laughs> to some that's degree right. Or the other. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I wrote. I, I mentioned. I mentioned that I run a, a Saskatchewan podcast, mm. and one of the main things that I used to get hate for because for six months I didn't work in the oil field. I wasn't working a real job. I was a mm. gig driver, delivery guy, and uh, and that because I was public about that, that was what people targeted about me. Like really? the conservatives who saw my channel or the, the pot mm. listen to the podcast, they were like, yeah, well, why don't you go get a, a real job? Why are you such a loser? This, that, the other thing. It's like, right. Wow. Right. Wow. Like that's really fucked up. <laughs> right. But that's what they've heard their whole lives. Like you have to go out and get a real job and be miserable and do the oil field thing. And it's, you know, so it sucks to suck. How dare you <laughs> escape that, that obvious path that you're supposed to be on. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. supposed to measure success in the way that I measure success, which right. is money. <laughs> right, right. So if you don't, too bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's uh, messed up. But I'm sorry to hear that you get hate comments on your podcast sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Only the Saskatchewan one. It's interesting. Cause really? I, yeah, oh. like, uh, I, like I say, the, my co-host, actually, I have two co-hosts now, but uh, – mm. He was, he's a, a, a queer progressive, but he's still a capitalist. He's still a, 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 a bank guy who believes in kind of the system can be fixed. And, okay. uh, and so he gets less targeted, <laughs> even though he's queer that, mm. than I do for being an anarchist. Who's like an anti-capitalist. <laughs> mm, mm. It's very strange. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, that, I guess that, that says something about the demographic that you're able to reach, though, because I think that that's a rare demographic for, for the left to be able to reach. So I think that that's, um, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's, but yeah, it's uh, sorry about the blowback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I try not to take too much of it seriously. It's just very strange stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. <laughs> so you, I'm curious about your, your uh, Canadian politics uh, channel. It's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, All of the videos are private. <laughs> ah, I see. So, yeah. uh, how long did you run that one though? Not long. Um, couple of years, but like I wasn't uploading very frequently. It was kind of just like a thing I was doing when I had the spare time to uh, do it. Um, only a few videos up on that channel at the end of the day. Uh, but there were videos that I worked very, very hard on and that turned out to be bad. <laughs> and I'm very grateful for that because it meant that when I started making videos for this channel, um, they're still bad, but they're less bad. You know, I feel like I got some of the like very major kinks out at the, on the first attempt, you know, so that that was valuable. Um, what what yeah. <laughs> made you choose the style of uh, like video essay that you do? Like you're, you're very much like in front of the camera talking and then uh, explaining your, your points. Uh, so what, what, cho what caused you to pick that versus say like, not being on the camera or putting like a cartoon up or whatever. you. Mm. Um, well, so I worked, I used to work as a photographer. Um, so I had a camera that was like pretty high quality. I've got my beautiful little flower mural um, that I, you know, so I feel like I, I had the space to do it. I don't mind being on camera. Yeah. People seem to like faces when they get the opportunity to have faces on, on screen. Yeah. I don't know. It wasn't like a, I didn't really think about it too hard. It's okay. a YouTube video. Yeah. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's <clears throat> yeah. I, I, I quite, I don't mind that. I, I like uh, doing the thing with uh, like being in front of the camera, but I didn't mm -hmm. always like I ran a mm -hmm. podcast for six years and we never went to video because, mm -hmm. because and I, I had an opportunity to, to be interviewed uh, for television and I was like, nope, forget it. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Why? I don't know. I always had a, like a, I guess a stage fright whenever I was being mm -hmm. viewed. Like perceived. Yeah. yeah. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, it's definitely harder. I have gotten to do a couple of like voice only sections and those have always been so much smoother than the ones where I'm on camera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like I've made a mistake, but it's too late now. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. No, that's all right. Yeah. I'm, I, my thing, part of my thing is like, I'm always a little worried that um, the company I work for is going to Google me. And try and actually mm. see, like, I want my community to grow. I want my channel to grow, but also I'm like, 
eh, unless I can afford to lose my job, I really should be right. like more careful. Somewhat anonymous. <laughs> yeah. Kind of ish. Which is, yeah. again, too late, but. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, at this point it is what it is, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there, I think that that's a, a fair hesitation, especially if you're going to do uh, like radical leftist politics on YouTube. I think that's, I mean, a lot of the people that I uh, follow are anonymous or have like a, a character or a face or something like that. And that makes yeah. perfect sense. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Using an alias might have been a good idea. <laughs> oh. Maybe. Too late. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Internet's forever. So. Luckily, when you Google Corey Johnston right now, it's a fisher guy. Like he's a professional fisherman. Oh. So. <laughs> common name congratulations <laughs> yeah quite quite lucky in that regard hmm. how did you come up with the the name the skeptical leftist um because i came out of uh the skeptical uh community like uh okay i started back in like 2000 and i want to say 2009 i started okay. doing like oh so like the atheist ca- yeah the atheist community? stuff got it got it got it yeah mm-hmm. and then uh, and then i kind of instead of focusing on the religious stuff, I started focusing on like science-based stuff and learning about critical thinking and like how uh, our brains trick ourselves into thinking we're seeing the truth when we're not. And, uh, but a lot of that, I find myself saying this a lot (laughs) lately, that community, the skeptical community is very pro status quo, right? Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. when you start presenting like critiques of uh, like politics as usual, like, they get rather defensive, whether it be, mm. you know, whether it be Democrats or uh, Republicans or liberals or uh, the conservative party, then you're like, if you're like, well, but none of this works, this is all bullshit. Right. Be skeptical of the power. <laughs> they pick and choose what to be skeptical yeah, of. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of them just avoid politics in general. Right. But then also uh, you get like your Sam Harris types or, uh, a lot of the skeptical world or the atheist community was very like on board with Jordan Peterson for a long time. Like yes. just yes. nonsense like that. And you go, Oh fuck, I can't be part of a community that's like filled with reactionaries. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, you can be, but you know, to your own detriment. To each their own. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So when I started this show, I was like, okay, well, I, I'm still a skeptic. I'm still part. That's still part of me. I still care about, evidence-based thinking. I care about like facing like my own cry critiques of my own thinking and my own biases and try and recognize all that shit. And, uh, but I'm definitely a leftist and I'm, I mean, <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, quite, quite far to the left. Yeah. I might say. Yeah. Quite yeah. far. Some to the left. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on my old show, like I, I, I used to run a show called the brainstorm podcast and Mm. we ran for like six years. And, uh, but uh, it was with like a bunch of like progressive regular type folks, science, science minded, really good, really good people, but not anarchists. So I was always like the, the crazy radical anarchist of the group. (laughs) But Mm. it was always fun. Do you find that you're still that? Yeah, usually. Every, almost everywhere I go. <laughs> yeah. 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 Me too. It's been a bit of a, I mean, less so lately, thankfully. I've been finally finding like, on, like it, I, the opposite of line. <laughs> IRL spaces ah. full of actual radicals. Um, That's cool. Very recently. Yeah. Very, very exciting. But for, yeah, for a long time, that is, that is the struggle of being um, this, this far to the fringe, I guess, <laughs> is that a lot of the times you only get to nerd out online <laughs> with other, yeah. with other, um, which Crazy is, I guess, people, why I guess Twitter's so popular, right? <laughs> yeah, but it's not good for discourse. <laughs> no, no, that's right. Yeah, that, it makes sense. It makes sense. A few months ago, like, because every now and then I get like this really strong urge to like build a community within my community, right? Like build. Like a, wh- where you are. Yeah. Like geographically. Mm. Yeah. And so I'll, I'll go around looking for people. I'll, I'll post invites to our local leftist discord which we have eight members now or something like that. Wow. Like, yeah. Congrats. <laughs> so we're doing good. Almost double digits. Yeah. yeah. That's right. And, uh, uh, so a few months ago, I find, I found somebody that followed me on Twitter, lived in the same city. I emailed him <laughs> and we went for coffee and it was very cool. And 
that was it. I haven't contacted him since. <laughs> it's like, okay, but I met another anarchist in real life, and like, right, right. But it's hard then to maintain those relationships with uh, with people, especially if you don't have a reason to see them on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah. Which is which is unfortunate, I think. Yes, but uh, it's interesting because he had uh, like a a multi person household with children who were raised by everyone in the household, and like, uh, nice. I'm not like they didn't have. I didn't ask him, I guess, but he didn't define the way the relationships were going, uh, which to me just said they were kind of all just together, living together, doing their whatever. And uh, Mm -hmm. yeah, it seemed very cool. Uh, Yeah. Kind of the kind of thing that you want to be exposed to more and explore, (laughs) you know? Yeah. Fingers crossed. I've got, I've got big, big plans for their future (laughs) commune one day. That's right. Yeah. (laughs) I know everyone says that and is joking, but I'm dead serious. Yeah. No, I I know a guy actually who, uh, he was, he did work in the oil field and he was like actually going, he like, he was buying land trying to be Mm. like, okay, I'm going to have this. This is going to be the commune that I'm going to live on. You know, I'm going to build my community. And I'm like, all right, man, sounds good. (laughs) (laughs) You weren't like, sign me up. You were like, all right, that's, that's your project. (laughs) Yeah. Like, well, he's in Alberta and I'm in Saskatchewan. So obviously. Right. Right. Obviously I can't move. Clearly not to Alberta. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I shouldn't make too much fun. My family's from Alberta. (laughs) (laughs) It still deserves it a little bit. No more than Saskatchewan, but. (laughs) (laughs) Sure. Yeah. So, so you're Canadian. I am. I did not know that before. Oh, Okay. I, I'm Canadian. I, I'm in Vancouver. <laughs> okay. Nice. Yeah. I, uh, I yeah. spent a, I think I lived in Vancouver for three months once in mm. a, in a grow house. <laughs> oh, how, <laughs> yeah. how was that? It, it was not fun. Uh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to leave. I just had to like sit there and watch TV and like take care of the plants. <laughs> like, it's, it sucked. So eventually I just okay. quit, like moved back to Saskatchewan, but. Love that for you. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Sorry that that was your experience in Vancouver. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Uh, it was with my brother who eventually got arrested and actually did time for the, for participating. For the grow house? Yeah. R- right. Yeah. Okay. So. So overall, not a great experience. Not a great experience at all, actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Just random conversational thing. What kind of, uh, mm-hmm. what podcast do you like, do you listen to? Do you listen to podcasts? Mm. Um, not nearly as much as I used to. I used to, I used to listen to them constantly all of the time. And then I found, um, more audiobooks and video essays to listen to. Um, but I, I, I used to really love Reply All. That was one of my favorite okay. podcasts. It's gone now for reasons, um, that were very dramatic, but it's, it's gone now. Um, I've also been enjoying The Dig recently. That's been a series of like really wonderful interview or, or interviews with some really wonderful people. I don't know. I mean... I can probably go through my list and find <laughs> so many podcasts. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I'm subscribed to still way too many, but mm-hmm. I, I reached the point where like, I don't, I'm not as much of a completionist now. Like I, I will let myself at the end of each day, if I haven't listened to an episode, I can delete mm-hmm. it. So then the next day nice. I can, you don't have like 18,000. That's right. To listen to. Yeah. No, that's a solid um, solid spread. I found the immediatism podcast and got so excited. I was like, I am going to read through, listen through all of these. I listened to two um, <laughs> and there's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of episodes and they keep like popping up on my feed. And I'm like, that sounds so interesting. Let me just like make a little note. And then it's just like one of the 8,000 tabs that I have open at any given moment. So yeah, there's just too much. There's more content than there is time. Yeah. <laughs> to do eh? life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that, that bums me out. I feel like I know I'm missing out on so much good shit. Yeah, it's it, it's like one of those. I was thinking like you see uh, like journalists and whatnot. They all have Substacks and they and like they're well known and they then they start podcasts. You go, no, you're not allowed to start a podcast. <laughs> There's too many journalists with big followings already that you know us small mm. creators have to compete against. Yeah, yeah, it's the small creators that really sort of get shafted by the system. Um, not quite sure how to solve that. <laughs> it seems to be like the strategy is to to um, 
like spend time in community with other creators has been okay. the thing that people are are doing. I don't know if you do that in the context or in the context of podcasts. Um, if you have the same sort of uh, conversational. Pieces. I used to back in the atheist community, like we used to have a Facebook mm. group that we would all, you know, communicate in and we would, you know, decide, Oh, well I need guests this week or what have you. Like people would come on and you could do that, but yeah. I haven't found anything like that uh, for the community that I'm part of on the left and whatnot. But Yeah. No. Okay. Well, that, that's, that's too bad. I'm sorry <laughs> to hear that. Creators are my favorite people. They're so much fun to talk to. <laughs> yeah. Usually. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. And that's all like, that's often how I, I get into like who I'm going to interview is because I'm listening to their show or I'm watching their videos and I'm like, right. This person sounds really cool. I would love to have a conversation with them. <laughs> and then you reach out and they're like, yeah, of course let's talk. Because I think leftists really like talking about their stuff too. <laughs> generally, generally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Although some people are really, they must get a lot of emails or messages. Or oh, what just have like you. inundated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then you go, well, mm -hmm. I don't really expect them to get back to me if they're mm -hmm. that busy. Right. Right. <laughs> I'm sure they do sometimes if you, if you like, you know, a good pitch. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> I, uh, I got, uh, when I first started this show, I got Robert Evans on the show. Oh, cool. Yeah. Like was, it was great. <laughs> yeah, it was great. And everybody's like, Hey, how did you, uh, manage to get him on? And I was like, I just sent him a message and I got lucky. Like, <laughs> like he just messaged me back. It was super cool. <laughs> that is super cool. Yeah. But it's not one of those yeah. things that you get, like you don't get that lucky with like really popular people very often. So. Yeah, I guess so. So it's a, uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess I don't have the secret sauce. I'll let you know if I figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's part, part of it is too. Like, uh, that's why video essays is something that I'm also interested in doing because just doing mm -hmm. a pure interview show, you're constantly trying to reach out to people and whether you, whether you want to or not, sometimes you do take those lack of responses personally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so he goes, okay, well, that's another person that I sent messages to that hasn't gotten back to me, I guess, you know? Right. I mean, yeah. And there's a lot of benefits of video essay format. I, I don't know where I'd be without video essays, honestly. Like, I I, I would not be doing this in, in the world of academia. That's a that was a no no uh, right. What's the word? A non-starter. Yeah, <laughs> I could say. Um, yeah, I think. I mean, we talked about this a little bit earlier. How I I'm I'm still fairly convinced that like uh, neurodivergency is overrepresented in the video essay sphere. But the sort of blend of of like academia and art and like conversational tone is just so perfect and has only existed in this way for so long like such a short amount of time right um and you can just say so much <laughs> you can just take the time to like write out your words exactly the way you want them to be and yeah great <laughs> yeah which as much i mean i do i really love having conversations but often you you don't have that kind of time right like to explain yourself fully i know a lot of times mm -hmm. when you're having a conversation like even when i'm doing an interview i'll be like well, I wish I would have said this and that, or I would have said that differently if I'd taken the time to, you know, think of it way ahead of time. Yeah. And like figure out which, which threads are worth pulling on and which are, are better left alone. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to your first video essay. That's exciting <laughs> to hear about. I always, I'm always excited to see people's, um, especially the first essays like that. that I feel like it tells me a lot. <laughs> it's, I'm sure it'll be a mess, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> of course, but like in the best possible way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got to start somewhere, right? You literally have to. Mm -hmm. That's the only option. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or you don't start, I guess. Or that's you the don't other start. Option. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. All right on. So I guess, uh, I apologize. I didn't, uh, I didn't like come in with some prepared questions or anything. Nothing but... to apologize for. This has been a very lovely, chill conversation. Uh, it's Friday the 13th. So it's, I had nothing else today. It's a bad luck day. So I'm staying indoors. <laughs> um, <laughs> so no, it's, it's, uh, it's been lovely speaking with you. Thank you for the, the invite. For sure. Uh, I guess the question that remains is where can people find your stuff? They can find me on youtube.com at anrel, A-N-R-E-L, short for uh, anarcho relating. Um, they can also find me on Twitter and Insta not Instagram, just Twitter, but there's two Twitters, Sally and also <laughs> anarcho relating. Yeah. I, just I was, made that choice. <laughs> I was just seeing your Twitter. Uh, the one Twitter where you say, uh, 
Yes, I've made the choice to have two Twitter accounts now. <laughs> this was better. No, look, okay. Here's why. Okay. I have my main account and that that's the account I get to like follow everyone on and then mute the people that I don't want to see posts from. Mm -hmm. And then there's the other one where if I actually want to go and engage with all the like dark uh doomery shit, um, I can go and like get a full purview of like what people are talking about and all of the discourse that I don't want to engage in. Fair. Um yeah, I like having my like little personal Twitter of just friends. Um but still, still connected, still able to DM all of the people that I want to be able to DM. So it's, it's a strategy. It was a choice. It may have been a regrettable choice, but for now, I'm keeping it. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I was thinking something the other day about how, like, once you follow a certain number of people, it's almost mm -hmm. like you're not following anybody. Anyone. Yeah. Because <laughs> you get all of their tweets and all of their likes and all of their, like, random network people. And it's like, all right, well. <laughs> well, and. Like I, I actively look for certain people like Anarch, like I love his content. Mm -hmm. So I'm always watching for, I haven't seen a tweet for, from him in probably four days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, so, so how, so I have to go and search for him in order for the algorithm to be like, oh yeah, you like him again. You like this. Yeah. 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 You so, go and turn on your little notifications, but then that gets kind of like weird. <laughs> when, once you get so many of those, it just becomes a notification group in your notifications. So yes. Yes. It's just like another You're feed, right. which is now my, my, my notifications feed is probably, uh, I mean, it's better, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's probably like a couple hundred people now. <laughs> so it's kind of the That's same too thing. Many people. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's too much. Yep. Same I don't problem. know how to sort it. No. Yeah. No. It's clear that I don't know how to sort it because I just keep doing the same thing. So I know there are lists. I don't know how to use lists. Um, yeah. I know on YouTube, there's like pocket tube, which is my favorite thing and the favorite extension ever where I, you can be subscribed to like hundreds of channels, which I am, and then organize them into groupings so that you only see certain ones at a time in your subscription feed. Oh, I um, did not know that. <laughs> it's, I've been using it for like six years. It's the best thing. That's, that's ever fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to try that. <laughs> but there's not one like that for Twitter that I know of. No um, way. Yet. Mm. Yeah. Like I know somebody posted a while back that if something about, if you add me to a list, I will block you. <laughs> so I was oh, like, okay. Get notifications about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Don't worry then I won't add you to a list. So I don't yeah. do use lists either then. Cause I don't want See, this is, this is the two Twitter account strategy. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You're, you've almost sold me for on better it. Better or for worse. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll take no responsibility if you do it. I, I never said anything. <laughs> Fair. No, yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Have a good rest of your Friday. You. Bye. All right. That's all, folks. Thanks for watching and or listening. Remember to share this show with your friends or on the social media site that you use the most. Thank you to everyone who supports this show on Patreon. I really appreciate it. And it helps me survive, which is essentially the only way that projects like this can continue for me. If you want to contribute, you can do that at uh, patreon.com slash skeptical leftist, or you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash skeptical left. If you can't contribute financially, then a, a like on YouTube or a five-star rating and a review on Apple Podcasts or on one of the podcast review sites like Podchaser would be great. If you want to find more from me, then make sure to check the show notes for links to all my stuff and to check out my website, skepticalleftist.com. There you can find the videos I do with my friend Damien Marie Athope, and all my old content from the Brainstorm podcast, Skeptarchy, and from my newly retired show, From, Ma from Many People's Strength. You can also find links to my Discord, Reddit, and Twitch. You can contact me through my website or by emailing mindofaskepticalleftist at gmail.com. My Twitter is at skepticallefty. My Facebook page is the Mind of a Skeptical Leftist. And my mastodon is collectiva.social slash at skeptical leftist. Thanks so much for listening and or watching and make sure to leave a comment on the video or on my website. Uh, join your local org, print off some posters or pamphlets and uh, spread the propaganda.